the heat. You're wasting energy. We've all heard it before, and we probably all know that wasting energy is bad. But why exactly is it bad? Energy is the stuff that keeps your lights on, and it warms and cools your home. But when energy is produced, there's often pollution created as well. For instance, your energy at home may come from a facility that burns coal or oil. Burning these fuels creates energy, but it also results in a ton of toxic chemicals being released into the air. It's unhealthy for us and bad for the environment. Almost half the energy used in most homes is for heating and cooling. Is the solution to simply stop using energy to regulate the temperature in our home? Maybe for some people. I would have been very happy to have lived in a building that was 54 degrees as long as the bill was low. <laughs> and I was saving energy and that would have been great. Lots of sweaters. <laughs> yes, but for some reason, my family wasn't on board for that. This is Alex Scheimitz, who lives in Massachusetts with his family. Here it gets very cold in the winter and very hot in the summer. He needed to find a way to more efficiently heat and cool his home. Well, this house was built in 1925, like all the other houses on this street. This is a two-unit building. It's a, a two-family house. Altogether, this building was using 1,400 gallons of heating oil per year for heating the building and heating water. We wanted to reduce that. 1,400 gallons of heating oil per year? Why so much? There were parts of this building that were cold, parts that were warm, drafty, what have you. To solve the problem of a cold, one cold room, you have to jack up the heat throughout the building. Alex had trouble maintaining a constant temperature in his home. Why? Well, because heat moves. Imagine a hot summer day. As you're sitting inside with the air conditioner on, Hot, high-temperature summer air sneaks in through cracks around windows, and maybe even through the walls. The air conditioner has to work harder and uses more energy to lower the temperature inside and keep you cool. Likewise, in the winter, when you have the heater on, hot, high-temperature air escapes through the windows and walls into the outdoors. The heater has to use more energy to keep you warm, but that means more pollution is created as well. So what can people do to improve their homes so that we don't waste energy and create more pollution than necessary? To answer this question, Alex and his family use their knowledge of how heat moves and the engineering design process, which is a series of steps engineers use to solve problems. After identifying the issue, they investigated the state of their home's current insulation, which is the material inside the wall that is meant to slow the movement of heat energy. They found a material called cellulose. We have cellulose in the walls, and cellulose is a kind of a neat material when you're talking about insulating your house because it's a recycled product. It's very simply newspapers ground up. Ground up newspapers so it's fluffy. The ground-up newspaper fluff, along with the little pockets of air between the fluff, help slow the movement of heat energy. But even with the cellulose in place, the home was still losing too much heat. The problem is, is that the cavities in the wall between the 2x4s were all filled with cellulose. There isn't that much space. And if you want more insulation, you need more space. With no more room in the walls to fill with cellulose, Alex had to imagine new ways he might further insulate his home. He considered properties of the materials he might use. It's important to consider the properties because each kind of insulation works better in one area over the other. You're always comparing different things and not, there's no one insulation that solves all problems. It can be the cost, it can be how it works with moisture, it can be how much the R value is per inch. Wait, R what per inch? Well, our value is a way of measuring the resistance of a material, of allowing heat to pass through it. And different materials, cellulose for example, has an R value of a three and a half to the inch. So if I have more inches, I have more R value. Other, more expensive materials have a higher R value. This is called a vacuum insulated panel. And um, it's expensive, unfortunately, but it is R40 to the inch, which is about I don't know, roughly 12 times, 12 to 15 times better than uh, cellulose. They're used in places commonly that, n that, that you don't have much space. When you're making a decision like this, you're making a decision not just on our value and final performance, but also what can you afford? 
And there are some things that are highly experimental or very expensive, things like vacuum insulated panels that are just as easily found on spacecraft that maybe we're not ready for because they're not economical to do in this kind of project. Besides dealing with trade-offs between cost and materials, Alex had to factor other built-in issues, like the windows. So wherever there was a connection from the inside of the house to the outside wall, there's a place for heat to flow. The windows are where you're always going to be weak spots in a building like this. Really, really good windows are R5, probably you could get to R7, but the walls themselves are R40. When you do a project like this and when you're doing everything over as we did, you have a chance to rethink which windows you need which windows you don't need, you also can think about which windows you want to expand. With the help of other engineers and contractors, Alex finished planning and created his new technology. They essentially wrapped a giant insulating blanket around his home. The, the original siding stopped right here, oh, and yeah. we, all we had was cellulose in the cavity. So all, of you, all you see here, this whole thickness here, is the combination of the four inches of insulation and the new siding. Wow. And, and this insulation, this envelope, wraps all around the house. And on the roof, it's six inches. Six inches? Why'd you put an extra two inches on the roof? The roof is the most important part. Heat wants to rise. Heat wants to rise. And the roof is A, the most important, and B, doesn't have windows. So if you only can insulate one thing, if you can only insulate one part of your house, you start with the roof. Makes sense. And did he do anything about the windows? We reduced these windows over here. We didn't eliminate them, but these were three full-length windows. And we reduced them so that we had more wall space for my children's desks. But, in, uh, but effectively, it also improves the efficiency of the room. Now, the best of all is to eliminate all your windows. And, um, I and think you're living in a cave. It's a, yeah, only for the truest of shut-ins, I think. <laughs> but it is the most efficient. What we need to do is weigh what is gonna have a better quality of life, not living inside of a cave, and yet, you know, not bleeding heat all the time. After all this work, how do we know that Alex's insulation design is successful? In the engineering design process, this is what the test step is all about. We install temperature and humidity sensors on each floor, as well as the neighboring buildings that were not uh, improved, they did not have uh, the upgrade of insulation. So we looked at this data and compared before we did the work with after we did the work. The change in oil usage for this building was so dramatic, it was a 70% reduction in energy usage for the entire building. But when you look at the neighbors' houses, their temperatures were fluctuating 10 or 15 degrees in one day, which is very uncomfortable. Here, we have consistent temperature, so we're more comfortable, we have a 70% less oil usage, we're saving money, everybody's happy. Sounds like a successful project. But does the story end there? Not quite. Just like there was room for improvement in Alex's insulation before, he says there are still ways the design could be improved today. What if it cost less to insulate homes? What if we could do it faster? What other materials might insulate better or have a higher R value? These are all questions that can be asked for future iterations of the design. And just like any great engineer, Alex made a point of communicating his results to others. He shared his story and encouraged other families to consider how they too might super insulate their homes, use less energy, and produce less pollution. With more citizen engineers like Alex around, just think of all the energy the entire planet would save.